In this episode, I will demonstrate how to create vector wings by tracing over a pencil sketch that I made in Inkscape version 0.46. I want to mention that there are numerous ways to create wings, not only the method used, but the design as well. There is no wrong or right way uh, to create them. Most importantly, if you can capture your design intent, then that's all that matters in the end. If you're not sure where to start, then I would recommend uh, that you do a Google search for wings and find something that is appealing enough for you to try to duplicate. I practiced drawing wings on a sketch pad until I was blue in the face. I came up with all kinds of designs. Some were good and some were pretty nasty. In the end, I settled on a wing design that I thought uh, that I saw by uh, Von Glitschka on a BMX illustration. What I liked about the design was that the wings were fanned out, something that I thought was unique when I compared that to other things that I saw online. Um, that particular design is what I used as a template uh, when I sketched my own version of it, and it's not identical, but it's very similar. Vaughn's work was uh, definitely an inspiration. So let's begin. Um, what I want to do is uh, first I got to note that uh, my key status monitor that uh, Richard and I usually use is uh, it's not going to be running in this episode. Um, I've just updated to uh, Intrepid Ibex and I'm having some issues with it running. Um, I can get it to run but I can't quite get the the uh, uh, status monitor to work correctly. Um, so anyways we'll do without it. I don't think that's a big deal. Okay, um, the first thing that I did was uh, I sketched a set of wings, and uh, I'll bring that in as a JPEG. Now, I have to note that uh, my scanner, uh, I borrowed my scanner from work, and I can't quite get it running in Ubuntu uh, just yet. I don't know if I have an issue with my scanner. I haven't used it in a while. It could just be broken. Um, so what I did was the poor man approach. I took a photograph um, of my sketch and I just brought that into GIMP and I darkened it up a little bit so you could see uh, my actual lines here. So this is my sketch. And again, this is based on uh, Von Glitschka's uh, wing design that he made. And it's not one-to-one, -one, um, but it's as close as I can get it. So, and it's pretty rough, and that's basically, you know, what sketches look like. So, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layer dialog box, and I'm going to add a new layer called Sketch. And I think what I'll do is put that below my current layer, and I'll do a shift page down to move that to my new layer and I can double check that by turning it on and off and make sure that it works okay what I'm gonna do next is uh, leave this box open I'm gonna go to my align and distribute button and just center that up on my page a little bit okay now that I've got my layer set what I'm gonna do is lock it and I'm gonna change the transparency to 50% that way it'll kind of lighten it up a little bit and uh, when I draw on top of it you'll see my sketch okay so we want to move to the layer one sketch so we can start tracing and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make short um, bezier paths around each part uh, of a wing and we're gonna close it okay I'll do the first one here. Uh, I'm not going to take you through the whole process because it'll just take too long for the screencast. Um, I'll do one or two here and show you how to do it and then I'll move on to the next step. Okay? So, anyways, this is locked. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our Bezier tool and I'll zoom in on this here. And Personally, I think tracing this in the Inkscape development version, which will be the next uh, 0 0.46, was much better. You can turn Spiral Pass on and get really nice pass. Uh, it's a little harder to do in 046, but if you just tweak your pass a little bit, you'll get something that I think is appealing. So let's start off here. Um, I'll start right here. and. A lot of people when they use Bezier Pass, they'll just come around here and just start curving 
you know I don't like to do that every time let me hit backspace to back up what I like to do is find is go across the curve and then hit enter to stop it I grab my node tool and I pull it to where I want to pull it okay and then leaving it selected you can grab your bezier path again and snap onto that node and keep going and I'll cut across again grab my node tool kinda of fan that out for the sharpness what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that rounded on both of these and again we'll just pull that in just kinda of tweak it here and since we're tracing over a sketch it doesn't have to be perfect we just want to get it close So I'll put one right here and I'll put one up here I'll hit enter to stop it and we'll curve this we'll make this rounded make sure this one is rounded okay now if we want to see what it looks like we can kind of uh, deselect it and make sure that we've got something that that looks semi appealing I think that's a nice curve there so what I'm going to do is click on that twice to expose my very last node and trace some more I'll hit enter here node tool to pull it out and basically what I'm doing uh, you can go all the way around this uh, fairly quickly and then adjust later but I kinda like to adjust as I'm drawing Bezier tool again we'll strike it down about right here hit enter pull that down and you can see by you know I'm sure you'll have better methods and, and methods that are comfortable to you but uh, doing it my way kind of just breaks it up a little bit. And we'll just keep pushing these in. Hit enter there. close it okay now I think that looks pretty good again um, you can come in here and just kinda finesse those curves a little bit if you find a sharpness you can just put just a little bit of a, a rounded note on it just to kinda blend it okay and we'll probably want to take this one and curve it just a tad okay and that's that part I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna go you're, you're gonna make closed paths for each one that you do okay so if we were to do this next one what I would do is come in here and draw past uh, this first path that I've made um, you probably noticed that in uh, Richard screencast the one that he did the uh, skateboard illustration uh, you saw him trace over uh, the original JPEG and he was uh, overlapping his closed paths the reason that he does that is uh, is you can move those paths below a path and you can hide it I'm gonna use the same method so what I'll do is draw past it come out here to my point hit enter we're gonna change our node And you can pull anywhere you want on the path to, to bend it. We'll strike down here. 
hit enter. Grab our path. I'll come down here. Hit enter. And we'll kind of bend that around, move that node. Okay, and then I'll close the path, and we can just draw anything we want as long as, as long as it's behind this path here. Okay. So basically, what you're going to be doing is you're going to trace each one of these, like I've already said, and uh, you're going to go past a path that you've already drawn, just like I've done here. So if you were to color this. Okay, now you see that I've clearly got one on top of each other. Well, if you move it down, you see how that works? You can just keep moving things behind each other, and then you get the effect that you want. Okay, so let's carry on. I think you pretty much get that part of it. So you'll go all the way around here and trace everything. Okay, when you're done, hopefully you'll get something that looks like this. Okay, now I'm going to delete this. put this on top. This is a, a tracing that I made beforehand. And I just want to illustrate what this thing looks like. Okay, let me ungroup it. Okay, and you can see, and it gets pretty hairy, but everything that I've done is an overlapping of one that I've already made. Okay, so when you get it quite right, What I'll do is do a copy, come over here and do a paste, and I'll show you what I mean by uh, moving the layers, okay? So if I were to make this, we'll make this a, uh, a light blue, each one on the inside will make light blue so we can see it. And we'll make these outside versions a little darker. Okay, now what we're going to do, I'm going to take this bit right here. I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. Okay, the next version here, we are going to lower. Okay, we're going to take these, lower them to the back. Actually, I'm going to go around the outside here. We'll lower that first one, lower the second one, third one, fourth, and fifth. Oops, actually we want to get this one one more. There we go. Okay, and we're going to take, I think we're going to take this one here. We're going to lower that. We're going to lower this one, and we're going to lower this one, okay? And that gets them all the way we want, okay? Whoops, I think we have one that needs to be lowered. More step, there we go. And let's see, if I get this one lowered, okay, there we go. We've got a nice curvature there. So that's pretty much... Let me group this together if I can move it around. Okay, so let's just recap here. Basically what I've done is I've brought in my sketch as a JPEG, PNG, image, didn't matter. You throw it on there and you, we're going to move that to a different layer and we're going to lock it so we can trace on top of it without moving it. Okay, we've drawn several paths and we've closed them. The reason that we close them is so that we can color them if we choose to. Um, very very simple and um, we need to get our layering uh, done correctly, our layer order, our Z order done correctly and once we color things we can see what we're doing. It's very difficult um, to move these to the right uh, Z order when they're not shaded because you're gonna see the wireframe through it. Okay, 
So we'll put that back on there for now. And we'll put this here. Um, our next step that we, we're going to do is um, I'm going to take this and ungroup it. Once we get to this point, I'm going to thicken up things. So uh, we'll change this to like a 10 uh, for a stroke. And I think what I should do is make sure that I'm using caps to get a nice rounded edge. Okay, I can select the next one, cap off the edges. There goes my phone. And we'll do this again here. And we'll select each one of them. Okay. We'll go all the way around here. And this does take a, a bit here. Now if you want to keep them sharp, you can keep them sharp. Um, I kind of like them rounded. Uh, so I'm going to go to each one of these and uh, round them off. You can adjust your, your stroke caps any way that you want. If you like them nice and sharp like that, you may want to leave them. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. We're getting closer. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, add some, um, Oh, I don't know, a little pizzazz to it. It looks a little plain right now. And uh, what we can do is I'm going to draw our bit. I'm going to take our Bezier path and I'm going to draw our curvature in here. Get that quite like I want it. And we're going to thicken that up. We're going to give this about an 8 for a stroke. And we're going to convert that to a uh, stroke to path. Okay, when we do that, it exposes some nodes, and we're going to delete the one on the bottom. The one on the top here, we're going to make sharp. Okay, and we're going to add these little flare effects on each one of the wings. Once I do a couple here, you'll see kind of what it looks like. I'll take this and bend it. Okay, we'll give that about an 8 for a stroke. And we'll convert the stroke to a path. Make this kind of a sharp. Okay, and we'll go all the way around. Okay, so we're going to do that in each one of those tips, and we're also going to add it. Um, inside here. And we're going to only do that on these uh, four blue here. We'll do that by using the same kind of a method. Take this and bend it. And we'll make that Again, we'll make that an 8, convert that stroke to a path, and we'll delete some of the nodes here. And we'll just fine tune it. Okay, and you're just going to add these highlights all the way around. Okay, 
when you get done, hopefully you will be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Okay? Basically what I've done, again, is I've added some uh, features in here. I've gone on every wing tip and split the wing to make it look a little bit more like a feather. And I also added a, a little bit right here that shouldn't go unnoticed. Okay? Um, I saw that on Vaughn's illustration and that was kind of a, a nice little touch. Okay? So I'll let you compare that for a second and get that finished. And pretty much that is our vector wing when we're done. And when we're done with this, we can take that and duplicate it and mirror that around. Hold our control key and you get a set of wings like this. Now what you put in the middle, it's all up to you. You could do anything that you want. Um, I know what's popular right now is uh, kind of like that rock band sort of uh, wings with a ribbon um, shield kind of a look. Um, if that's what you're going for, Let's get rid of this here. I made just a, a quick illustration. Now obviously it's, it's a little plain, a little unfinished, um, but that's not really the point of the screencast. The point of the screencast was show you how to make these wings. What you stick inside here in the middle, come up with anything. Put a star there. Um, but again, I, I always see this kind of in a grungy looking band kind of a theme. Um, uh, very, very popular. Um, like I said, it's kind of like a rock star type of a thing or a rock band type of a thing. Um, but that's basically it. That's, that's our tutorial. Um, we've gone from a sketch, uh, traced all the way around, added some uh, highlights and some extra features, and that's it. That's vector wings right there. So, Hopefully I didn't go too fast, and I'm sorry if I did cut out some steps. Um, if I had gone all the way around here and walked you through it, it would have taken forever, and uh, I didn't want to lose interest. Um, but I think once you get the, the knack of tracing around certain things, um, you get the hang of it uh, pretty fast, and it does open up possibilities. I know I sketch things on pad of paper often, and I know a lot of other artists do it too. Um, Inkscape, you know, you can start right off in Inkscape and uh, start sketching away, but uh, sometimes just grabbing a pencil or a calligraphy pen and, and setting down behind a pad of paper, it's just a little bit more flexible. And if you have access to like a, a, a scanner or um, a camera, any way of getting it in uh, to your computer so you can trace over it, then uh, go for it. Um, it also does help to, uh, if you have a Wacom tablet, um, I do a lot of sketching in GIMP sometimes uh, for work-related stuff, and uh, GIMP is very flexible. I like the pen tool in GIMP um, because I can uh, stroke pass pretty easily, and I can control Z and back out of there if I, if I don't quite get a shape that I want. So hopefully you've learned a little bit uh, about vector wings, and again, uh, the wing style, uh, use anything that you want to do, uh, any kind of design. Uh, just practice on paper for a bit and uh, until you get better. I'm not the best artist in the world. I'm not really an artist at all, actually. And uh, I was able to find something that I liked and sketch it pretty closely. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.